What we're looking at right here is real time data of all of the traffic that's being passed through my Nginx proxy manager reverse proxy. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get that set up. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. YourCDKey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page. And right here, you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm going to come over here and right there, you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm going to go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we want to do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there, you can see that Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. What I want to show you in this video, as we saw earlier, is I want to show you how to actually get real time data about the traffic that's being sent through your Nginx proxy manager instance. This is something I've wanted for a really long time. Basically, since I started self hosting, I wanted to have access to what was going on with my traffic. Uh, even using Cloudflare isn't great at the moment as far as getting uh, specific information. So a while back, well, really for quite a while now, I've been periodically just searching for uh, a way to do this. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I I ran across an old post on Reddit of somebody who had kind of cobbled something together. And I tried it out and I did a bunch of troubleshooting and I got it to work. And I was blown away that it worked. And the problem with the way it was set up is that it was there was a lot of a lot of little minu minutia kind of things that had to be uh, done in order to get certain things to work. And it was it was kind of a pain in the butt. Luckily, um, when I saw that I got it working and everything was good, I, I left a comment on that post. And uh, surprisingly, the original poster of that responded and I was blown away. It was an old post like eight months ago or something. Anyway, um, they, they actually sent me a private message saying, hey, buddy of mine is working on making this better. Would you be interested in more information? And absolutely. Uh, once I saw the potential, uh, I immediately I wanted more. I wanted, I wanted this to work. I wanted it to be an easy deployment versus what I had been uh, led to believe was, was going to be the, the deployment process. So luckily, um, I, I was able to, to get more information and I ran into an issue with this new Docker image that was created and I reported back and they fixed it. So let's actually uh, check this out real quick. So this is uh, Javier or Javier. I apologize if I screw that up. Uh, his Go Access for Nginx Proxy Manager, we can see that it was updated four days ago. And uh, basically, like it says right here, and this is this is very, very important. This is still in development. This isn't the final, uh, like the, the, the final release or the, the whatever. This is still in development. But um, I'm so stoked about it that I really want you guys to know about it as well. So um, <clears throat> if we if we come over to here, uh, over to the tags, we can see that this is only currently only available on x86 platforms. Right now, this will not work on anything other than an x86 platform unless you recompile it to work with a different platform. So just keep that in mind. Again, this is still in development. I think they're going to try to work out all of all of the kinks and bugs and get things set up the way they want it. And then they may make uh, there's a multi architecture kind of setup. But for right now, just x86. Now, if we come back over to the overview, uh, we can head over to the GitHub page, which I've actually already got open over here. Um, and if we come back to there, Nope, I guess that's I guess that's it. So um, there's a license and a readme for for more information. Uh, all of this uh, again, you can see that this was last updated four days ago. Um, so there is a GitHub page if you've got issues. In fact, there are issues over here. Oops, that's not what I meant to do at all. Issues. So you here you can see uh, I've actually re uh, requested um, access to Cloudflare's remote or mod underscore remote IP because currently because I'm using Cloudflare, all of the results for IP addresses, almost all of the results for the IP addresses are um, are showing up as Cloudflare IP addresses. So hopefully uh, this can get addressed and he can get that to pass through. Uh, of course, there'll be an API involved in it, that sort of thing, but uh, I'm getting ahead of myself as far as that's concerned. Just know that there are, you, you can absolutely open up an issue for feature requests, bugs, things like that. So just know that. We come back over here to uh, Nginx Proxy Manager. <clears throat> He's actually uh, gone ahead and created a couple of Docker Composes uh, Docker Compose files for us. Um, and the, the second one down here is the one I would encourage you to use. Don't use zero 
on your PUID and PGID. That is root. Don't do that. That's a bad idea. Uh, actually get the correct PUID and PGID for your user. Uh, if you're on Open Media Bullet, you're just going to get the, uh, the, the, the username or the, the, the PUID and PGID of the account that you log into Open Media Bolt with. If you're not on Open Media Bolt, whatever, whatever user you log into your server with. So I'm gonna actually jump back over here to my Portainer instance and take a look at this. Um, so basically, uh, like I said, we've got a version three. Our service is uh, Go Access in this case. The image is this uh, Javier, Javier, I apologize. Uh, his Go Access for Nginx Proxy Manager, again, with the develop tag for the moment. That may change in the future. Uh, again, this still is in development. I want that to be very well known. This is still in development. Uh, in fact, he doesn't even know I'm making this video. So. Javier, I apologize if I'm if I'm about to overload you, um, but I'm super excited. I think you're doing great work, and I want to get this out into the public so more people will back it and get behind it and support it. So uh, below that, we've got a, go, a container name. You can name this whatever you want. Uh, I already had a different version of it set up. It was more convoluted. Um, so this is version two for me. Uh, restart always. Uh, of course, you want always in this case if you want to if you want this to continue to run and if it runs into an issue or whatever. Uh, below that, we've got some environmental variables. Again, time zone for America slash Denver for me. Adjust that for you. Again, the PUID and PGID, uh, because this is set up on an Open Media Vault uh, VM, I, I used my uh, Open Media Vault user credentials for uh, the PUID and PGID. Uh, of course, below that, we've got some ports. You can map that wherever you need to. If somehow you're already using port 7880, you can move that. Uh, again, if you do that, only modify the first half and the volumes. Now, this is the volumes that you want to map to are wherever your Nginx Proxy Manager volumes reside. So that means that you need to install this wherever your Nginx Proxy Manager container is in order for this to work. I tell you what, let's just do this. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've logged in to my... Um, to my VPN or my, my VM that has Nginx Proxy Manager on it. So what I'm going to do uh, here, if we take a look, you can see that my volume is mapped to home data logs. So let's do CD space slash home. And then, uh, in fact, let's do this. Let's just, let's just go into home for, for now. And if I do an LS, uh, you're going to see some, some things that I screwed up when I set up Nginx Proxy Manager. And that's because um, this really should have all been put in the Docker folder um, but I wasn't paying attention when I deployed and now we don't want to mess with it. So uh, here we've got, um, I'm in the home directory. We've got a data folder there um, and a let's encrypt folder. Those are the two folders that you need for, for uh, Nginx proxy manager. Uh, and of course our logs will be in data. So we'll do CD uh, data and an LS. And then again, we've got our logs in the logs folder there. And right there are all of my logs. Because I know that this is where uh, everything is stored, that's why I've mapped my volume here. So map this folder, this logs folder, to wherever the logs for your Nginx proxy manager are stored on your server. Again, install uh, this Go Access container on the same server as your Nginx proxy manager server. Once you've got all of this set up, you can click update the stack, or in your case, because you'll be deploying it for the first time, deploy the stack, um, and then give it a few minutes to spin up. Uh, and, and then once it's spun up and once it's ready to go, um, if you come back over to your containers here and you click on this, uh, you may get a white screen that says that it's currently compiling or, or, or looking through data. Give it a minute. It, it, once it's done with that, then, then the page will either reload or you can reload it yourself, whatever. But it's got to parse all of the logs that you have in your Nginx Proxy Manager logs. Uh, otherwise, just chill, hang out, wait for it to do its thing, and then um, then it will pull all of your data and, and graph it out very nicely, basically from the point at which you uh, your Nginx Proxy Manager logs are available. Um, so mine go back to November 25th of last year up to February 24th of this year, because that's today's date. Anyway, um, so here we can get an idea of, uh, we can see hits versus visitors uh, for all of this. Uh, you know, unique visitors per day, including spiders. Uh, you've got requested files. Um, and, and down here, if we scroll down, we can see how much data uh, was, was um, transmitted on each individual day. Uh, looks like quite a bit on a couple of these days over here. Um, below that, we've got, or sorry, over here to the right for the requested files, we can see uh, kind of where people have been going on the server, uh, that sort of thing. Um, you, can, you can page through your results here uh, if you want to do that. Uh, over here, we've got uh, uh, static requests. In my case, it's mostly fonts that are the static requests, but yours may be different. 
Um, here we've got uh, 404 file not found errors. Uh, so here we can see that somebody um, is trying to, uh, in this case, uh, for most of this is looking for uh, WordPress stuff that I don't have on here. Uh, let's see, below that we've got visitor host names and IP addresses. Um, so uh, all except for that first one, which I'm gonna have to blur, all of these 172 addresses are Cloudflare addresses and that's uh, what I'm hoping that uh, that Javier Javier can uh, do the, the mod thing for Cloudflare to actually get the legitimate IP addresses for stuff that's going on here. Um, it's not a huge deal because I've got fail to ban on the server as well that has that mod IP address thing. So it's it's not necessary here. However, I would like to have more granular data about what's going on. Um, over here on the right side uh, of the same thing, we can see operating systems. Primarily, uh, Windows uh, are the ones hitting me here. Uh, below that, we've got browsers and time distribution. Uh, so basically, what kind of browsers are hitting time distribution as far as <clears throat> as far as that's concerned. Uh, virtual hosts. Uh, now I'm gonna have to be careful. I'm gonna have to blur some of this because I don't want you guys seeing what's what my virtual hosts are, but uh, if we scroll down here, uh, we can see uh, how many hits, how many visitors, um, it, uh, how many, how much data was transferred. Um, as far as that's concerned, um, over here on the right side, of course, we get our refers, like who's referring data to this. Again, a lot of that's going to be blurred, but more data. Uh, and then if we scroll down even further to the last of this, we can see uh, HTTP status code and uh, geolocation uh, as far as where people are hitting this. So. That is kind of the, 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 the quick and dirty version of this. Um, and, and again, like I said, uh, this is still an early development. I'm just super excited about it. I hope that you guys will go support Javier, Javier, uh, and getting this, uh, developed even more and more and more to the point where he's happy with it. Um, and, and of course, you guys may have other ideas for things that you'd like to see. If there are things that you guys would like to see, open an issue, um, be, be as descriptive in you, as you can in your, uh, in your when you open an issue, don't just be like, "I want this." Explain what, why, how. Uh, do be as descriptive as you can, helping this guy uh, develop this uh, so that uh, that it's a good, useful tool for everybody who wants to use it. But I think that's going to cover it, man. Uh, there's, the, I just, I was really excited to to share this. So uh, definitely head down to the description. I'll have all of the information you'll need for this down there. Um, of course, if you want to support the channel, you can do that in the, from links in the description as well. Uh, you don't have to. You just can if you want to. Uh, so definitely check those links out. Um, but I think with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.